Hello fellow glue sniffers and spruce snippers, welcome back to Blitzkrieg Model Works. I'm Bob, you know me as Darkman on the forums. Hey, I'd like to apologize for uh, a little mis uh, miscommunication in the last video. I had said that we were going to do some deckling and weathering in the last video and um, do it as a kind of a slideshow. I ended up having some issues with the decals with this kit being 20 plus year old decals. They gave me a bit more problems than I was bargaining for. Not only that, my setting solutions, which I'll get into a minute, were also about the same age, so they weren't really up to the task on their own. That being said, I did get the decals for the kit done. This is the turret. There are a whole seven decals for the turret. that nice and close for you. These settle down quite nicely. There's a little bit of film around the edges. You can see if the light hits it just right. But they turn out pretty well for the hull. Bridge markings in the yellow. License plate number unit and then unit and plate number on the back as well as so all these ones aren't nearly as pronounced even though they came off the same sheet um these have also had yes these have also had a matte lacquer finish put on top so it blends everything in really nicely and as it sits right now, we are ready to begin the weathering. But before we do the weathering, which I will cover in another video, and I'll do some basic and some slightly more advanced stuff for everybody, we're going to cover deckling. Deckling in and of itself is pretty simplistic. You take your decal sheet that comes with the model, and as an example, let's take one of these Swiss license plates. You just cut it off. You have the small dish or bowl or whatnot full of water. You put it in the water and you wait. And sometimes you wait and you wait and you wait. Um, but before you even get to this point, you have to prep the model, which is what I did here, which is what I did not cover uh, because of the deckling issues. So after we got done, the, the uh, camouflage pattern, I sealed it in a lacquer um, spray finish. Uh, there's lots of different ones available on the market. There is, I'm hoping I'm grabbing the right one, things like Tester's Dull Coat. There is Micro Flat, or Super Flat, sorry. Um, it's a little out of my reach. Uh, Tamiya make a flat clear. Almost everybody that makes paints makes a flat finish. Um, what I had done is I've got a bunch of this stuff and it works really well. Um, it's an industrial matte lacquer. Um, don't bother looking for this stuff. I've been told it's discontinued. It's years old and it works really well. But that was just to seal it. Um, so the actual paint would be protected from the next finish, which what you have to do, and I have already done some deckling on this, so just ignore that for a minute. I've taken the paint hulk and I paint, used the same colors, but you'll notice it's really flipping shiny. Well, what the heck? This came out pretty matte and this is pretty shiny. What the hell happened? Well, forgive me, I didn't prep quite well enough. Before you deckle, what you want to do is you want to uh, seal the finish and then you want to put a gloss coat. Deckles adhere much, much better to a glossy surface than a matte surface. Uh, what happens with a matte surface as well is the decals with the carrier film, especially if you're using like some of these white outline ones, you can kind of see the carrier film. It's the matte finish on the glossy background. What will happen if you were to take this and put it onto this, the matte finish, is a matte finish is actually quite rough on a microscopic level. It, it's very, very rough. Lots of hills, lots of valleys. If you put a decal sheet on, it's 
going to be flat. So it's actually going to be raised just sitting on the very tips of the matte paint finish. Um, that will allow light to go through it, hit the actual paint underneath it, and bounce back, and you get something called silvering, which looks absolutely horrible. So one step around that is first apply a gloss finish. And again, you can do things like um, uh, everybody basically, again, that makes paint makes a gloss finish. What I use because of I'm old school and cheap. Pledge Floor Care. This used to be known as Future Floor Polish. Um, this is acrylic. You can water it down, um, thin it with you know alcohol. Uh, same with your paints and spray it on in light mist coats until you get the level that you want to get. Um, not to say that you can't use you know an off the shelf made purpose made like the Tamiya stuff or testers or whoever, oh, there's my testers, yeah, the gloss coat. This is a lacquer versus the Tamiya, which is an acrylic. They work equally as well, whatever suits your purpose, whatever you're most comfortable with. Um, those are also, by the way, available in spray cans, at least from testers. I'm not sure about anybody else. Um, if you look really close, you'll notice that this surface is really rough too, and that's what I wanted. Um, this is not the paint that I put on. This is actually underneath the primer, this gray automotive primer, uh, because I was just use this for testing uh, different effects and, and brush load, airbrush load and whatnot. I didn't really care about it, but I want to see how well different types of setting solutions work. Now, a setting solution you use in conjunction with your decals, and unfortunately, you're going to have to buy a bunch of different ones because Every set of decals responds differently. Some brands, you know, like uh, Italieri will work differently from Tamiya. Tamiya will work differently from Dragon. Dragon might be different from Hobby Boss or um, Bronco. Uh, there's companies like Archer, who that's what they do is they make decals. There's Cartograph, that's what they do is they make decals. They make very, very thin decals, so you need a fairly mild solution. You don't need anything really harsh. There are some companies like, oh, I don't know what they're like now, but I remember the old Lindbergh days. Those things were were like manila paper. They were like cardboard. They were so hard to get to sit flat. So what a setting solution does is it actually softens the decal. It softens the carrier film and helps it blend in with the surface that it's going on, which is what I'm testing for here. And now one of the weakest ones you can get on the market, and this is this is an old bottle. I don't know if they still look like that. It's super micro set. Um, this is the stuff you'd use for like Archer and Cartograph type decals. Really, really thin stuff. Um, it's a very mild solution and it'll soften it and it'll the decal will conform to the uh, details on the kit. This did not work for these old Italieri decals. Not at all. Didn't do anything. So leaving the decal on, we switch to the next strongest one that I had, which is Microsol. Same company, a stronger version. It did better, um, not bad considering this stuff's probably 20 years old, um, but it still didn't really cut it. Okay, fair enough. Um, uh, another one that I had in my repertoire was Mr. Mark Softer. Um, forgive me, I didn't do any research before <laughs> hit and record. I don't know if it's still called this. I'm Pretty sure Gunzi are still making stuff. It probably won't look like this or it might not even have the same name, but it'll be pretty much the same stuff in the bottle. This worked beautifully. This worked awesome for these decals. Um, one of the things I have tried because I, I was reading on different setting solutions, what's available because there's so many new manufacturers out in the last, you know, five, 10 years, is there's a lot of homegrown guys who have been saying that vinegar works as a setting solution, I thought, well, that's kind of interesting because I know this, some of the death setting solutions I've used over the years do have a very vinegary scent to them. So I kind of wondered, um, you know, if, if that's even a component, never mind the whole thing. So I actually went out and these empty Tamiya bottles are awesome for this kind of stuff. I actually got some vinegar. This is not tabletop vinegar, however. Uh, this is not the stuff you put on your fish and chips or that you, you know, pickle beets or anything. This vinegar, ugh, and again, being cheap, I bought lots. 
is industrial stuff. This is what they use to neutralize floor stripper, the stuff that peels floor wax off with. So uh, that's a gallon of it. That cost me all of about no oh, twelve, fifteen dollars, and that's a lifetime supply providing it works. So what I've done here is I've got three different decals from the same sheet that this came from. These were the extras. Um, this decal here I put purposely because of the kind of the detail that goes over. That one actually has the vinegar. I wanted to see how well it would work on something that I, that's a difficult profile to try and get something to snug down on. Uh, never mind all of the little tiny bits of dust and lint and everything that are in the paint, underneath the paint, underneath the, the sealant. This one here, this cross, is just a straight decal. There's no setting solution. There's no nothing on it. It's just water and whatever adhesive came off. I didn't even pat it down. The 432 actually has the Mark Softer. So this is what I used for the rest of it. Now, I didn't have anything quite this bad. There's a lot of ribbing on that toolbox um, to try and get this to snug down on. But this is still very, very wet. You'll see it's kind of milky. Um, that is undoubtedly the setting solution reacting with the uh, floor polish. Um, that will go away as it cures or dries. Uh, the hardest decal that I had to sit down on this was the bridge, uh, the bridge weight, 60 ton, and that's because it had to go up and over top. And show that there. And it actually seemed to work fairly well. And I didn't do any manipulation. I wasn't, you know, taking a wetted cloth or a wetted tissue. By the way, don't use tissue. It tends to like peel these things up. A cloth would be much better, an old handkerchief or something that's very soft, but dampened with whatever you're using to press down on that will sometimes help. Um, I'm not gonna do any of that with these. Um, it's just whatever I put on and we're just gonna let it sit and we'll come back when uh, this is done. And this is, uh, that'll probably take, I'll leave this overnight. It, it's fairly late, it's after 9 p.m. right now. Um, but we'll just see how this works. I'm very interested to see how the, uh, the, uh, the vinegar works. I'm looking at it right now and it's, it's okay. I don't know how well it'll work for this particular type of decal. Um, there were two sheets in the box, the main sheet, uh, which was probably the original one, had just had a Larry on it, didn't have a manufacturer. Um, there was another one with a manufacturer, and I'm not familiar with them. And I did use some of these. I can't honestly remember what I used them for. Um, but they weren't the crosses. I think they were maybe unit markings or something, something silly. Uh, or I could have just cut them out and used them for something else. Who the heck knows? Uh, but I'll just leave it like this and we'll come back and we'll see how these work. Uh, whoops, left that in too long. But when you're doing your decals yourself, normally you shouldn't leave them in so long that they actually separate from the, uh, uh, separate from the backing paper. And these are just a blunt unit for the decal. So that's your decal. It's very, very thin, very fragile, uh, especially when they're old like this. They break very easily, actually. This particular, this cross actually broke um, right along here, and I snugged it up as good as I could. We'll see how well that turns out. So normally you just take your decal and you put it on kind of wherever, and you can manipulate it in with a set of tweezers or your fingers or a wet brush. You don't want to use a dry brush because it'll just suck up the, the water. And uh, actually maybe we'll put some vinegar on that one. And see what happens to it. Um, now the thing with setting solution is when you put it on, you want to put a fair bit on and then for the love of Pete, don't touch anything. <laughs> just let it sit. Uh, don't try to manipulate anything in, into place or anything like that. Just let it sit. The good thing is, is that if you don't get the effect you want, uh, like what happened on, on these markings on, on the, the leopard, um, the microset 
didn't work. Um, so I immediately, like the next day, okay, let's try Microsol. I slathered on a bunch of Microsol with a brush and I let it sit till the next day. I come back and yeah, it's better, but it should not they were still not really setting down as nicely as I'd like. So then I used the Mr. Mark softer and boom, they worked. So it was a three day process. Uh, but had I used the softer the first time, um, it might have worked well. I could have run the risk of, because it's a uh, apparently a much stronger solution, I could have actually melted the decals, which is always a concern if you try to use the strongest stuff first. Always go with the weakest and then work your way up to the strongest stuff. Um, obviously if you find something that works midway, stop, <laughs> don't keep going, uh, unless you're just experimenting. And then when you're done with your deckling, you just take your paper and you just toss it in the garbage like so, uh, or recycle if you're so inclined. So that's about it with deckling. Um, I'm going to let this sit overnight and I'll let you see tomorrow. I'll come in and, uh, we'll do a quick shot and I'll show you how well this turned out. And we'll do some weathering on the main kit in a separate video. Um, there's going to be, I'll, I want to do a little bit of base weathering before I put the snow pattern on to kind of replicate like the vehicle was kind of, you know, it had been used and run through the bush and hit it against the odd, you know, tree trunk or stump or rock or whatnot and got a little banged up. And then they painted the white over top. And then that got banged up. And then there'll be things like the, uh, the, the intakes here and there's intakes your radiator and, and your engine intakes there's actually i don't know how well you can see there's actually some really nice screen detail i don't know i don't know which i'm really impressed that they got this to the tamiya one's got it too and it's way nicer but considering this is an old old italy kit this is one of the first leopard 2 kits out this was really nicely done um that'll be done last so we'll do like a really dark um i don't know if you guys will know what i'm talking about a really dark wash uh on that to kind of fill that in give it some depth uh, along with the grills on the back and the exhaust so we'll do that and uh after that uh there's a few snow effects that we'll be looking at um the like i said the old standby is baking soda and uh uh, a very mild white glue and water spray that you, you spray over it to kind of seal it. Um, there's a few aftermarket items that are out there that people will use. Uh, again, for the love of Pete, do not use the spray foam crap you put on your windows at Christmas. I've tried that. The stuff is horrible. Uh, uh, the baking soda is way better than that. Uh, but one thing I'm, gonna ho I'm trying to get a hold of is glass beads. And we're not talking the ones you make necklaces and chains out of. We're talking about tiny little glass beads that they use for bead blasting on metals and plastics. Uh, I know a few people that do that as a hobby and for a living. And I'm asking if I can get uh, a small sample of some of the glass beads before they, they're used. And then again, after they're used to blast whatever paint or whatever off, because they're probably fractured and a lot smaller and maybe a little more interesting. The, the hazard with working with the glass beads is, depending on how small they are, they're, you're going to have to wear respiratory protection until they get sealed down because you don't want to be inhaling that stuff. It, it's, it does not get absorbed into your body. Once it's in your lungs, it's in your lungs, so it's a little dangerous. So I'm a little, little iffy about this, but I've seen some stuff that guys have done with glass beadwork, and it's really, really cool. So I'm very interested in trying it just for the sake of it, but I'd recommend, you know, going with the uh the baking soda bit so anyway we'll let this stuff sit overnight and uh, i'll come back tomorrow and we'll take a look at uh how it's progressing right thank you very much if you haven't already like and subscribe and uh any constructive criticism please uh put it in the comments i appreciate it talk to you later hi guys well we're back and you'll notice we have a slightly different uh video setup here Changed a few things around and hopefully this will be better for both of us because I can actually see what the heck I'm doing instead of looking up in a mirror. Um, so anyway, our deckling is completed. And here, as you can see, the kit deckal did not snug down very well at all. And if you look around the edges, you can see that silvering that I was telling you about earlier. 
where the light bounces underneath the decal and comes back out. It does happen still on gloss if it doesn't snug down properly. Our industrial vinegar helped a little bit, but not a whole heck of a lot really. So that's not to say that it does not work, it just did not work on these particular decals. Unfortunately, if you remember uh, in the last video, I said not to touch these uh, with a tissue. Dummy me did exactly that. <laughs> um, the 432 got a little uh, destroyed, but if we look really close, you can see that decal snugged right down. And that's with the Mr. Mark Softer. Uh, I tried to do a different decal on the other side, and actually the decal just disintegrated when I tried to put it on. Uh, hazard of dealing with old decals. So, so that's the differences between the three. So again, uh, don't don't sorry, don't be touching uh, with t tissues. <laughs> bad bad mojo. And we'll get on to weathering and some uh, wash detailing and that in the next video. So again, constructive criticism down below. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.